Namaskar. Hello and welcome to P Guru's channel. I'm your host Sri Ayer. Today I have with me Sri Ram Seshadri ji again. He has been uh, uh, going crisscrossing the state left and right, north and south, all over. And he's going to be sharing with us some of his experiences of campaigning as well as the initial projections from the vote. The percentage of vote itself has been a matter that has been under some controversy because new numbers that were released by the election commission are substantially lower than what was projected last night. So hang on, get on, uh, fasten your seat belts. This is going to be one heck of a ride. Let's welcome Sri Ram Sejadri ji first. Sri Ram ji, namaskar and welcome to P Guru's channel. Sir, Namaskaram, Namaskaram to P Guru's uh, viewers. Uh, it's been almost more than two weeks that, you know, I met you all. Uh, you know, thanks for patiently, you know, a lot of people reached out to me on Twitter saying that what is your analysis and all. Uh, consciously, I was not making any um, analysis, uh, but uh, uh, because of various reasons. But now let's, we are here, we are in the uh, crossroads and then let's have a good discussion today. Thank you, sir. And now let's start the ball rolling. I'm going to tell you the new polling percentage numbers that have been put out by ECI. They've clarified that at 11 o'clock they'll have, uh, I think, a press conference. I don't know what is going to be talked there, but let's take a look at the latest percentages as released by the ECI. Um, sir, the previous one said something like 72%. Now it has been down revised by 3%. Interestingly, I'd like to point out to Chennai South and Chennai Central, these two are down by close to 18% each. Sriramji, what yeah. is going on? Yeah, so uh, it, it is a little bit of a surprise. Normally, when we have a vote share shared by election commission by end of the Every hour they keep releasing, 1, 1 p.m., 11 p.m., 1 p.m., 11 a.m., 1 p.m., 2 p.m., 3 p.m., 5 p.m., 6 p.m., like that. Naturally, that, uh, you know, it will keep increasing. And then, uh, you know, final numbers when they are declared by about 7 or 8 p.m., which is also still not a consolidated one, there would be a bit of a percentage or two change for sure across the state. But... Today, as yesterday, what we got was, uh, you know, uh, much higher and then downward projected. Say, for example, by about 7 or p.m. when we got South Chennai, it was about 64 percentage or 65 percentage. And then now it has been downgraded to 54 percentage. By 5 p.m. when we got the number, it was almost like 59 percentage, if I was not wrong. So how can that go down so drastically is a big uh, question. So election commission definitely has to answer a lot in this place, uh, Shreyarji and uh, our viewers, uh, because was there a uh, uh, hourly release that they were making? Was there a uh, you know not a correct one, or did not, did they not collect the information from various uh, places uh, before projecting? So that's a big surprise. And voter list, uh, you know, I want to just clarify, uh, Shreyar uh, Ji, that, you know, the voter list, people uh, name missing in the voter list. I actually put the onus on most of the individuals whose name was removed. See, it happened to me in 2019. 2019, January, uh, before the election, January month, I checked my voter list. My name, my father's name, my wife's name was there. And my mother who had passed or by, by then, her name was removed. So I was happy that, you know, it has, the enumeration has happened properly. When I So I, just, I didn't uh, do much about it. So I went to vote in the electoral booth and then I uh, found my name missing there. And I have taken the number from the previous to a January list. I have taken what is the uh, booth number, etc. Uh, the registration number, that voter ID number, uh, everything. It was missing. And later on, found out uh, in my address, my mother's name, which was removed, she, she was deceased by then, was included, whereas my name, my father's name, my wife's name uh, were missing. I was perplexed by that. I made a formal complaint in the you know returning officer uh, stating that January, this was there. And then what has changed between January and the election time? Uh, then what happened, uh, you know, uh, we, uh, I was searching through the entire list again by the, from the corporate, uh, from the election commission data. My name was there in one random booth, same number, my picture, my name was there in a random booth. 
and then my wife's name was there in another random booth but my father's name was nowhere to be seen my mother uh, what was in the address in fact you know uh, god only knows how this resurfaces so there was some definitely some problem every election there would be at least few thousand in an lok sabha election when you look at it few thousand um, issues are always there but not to the extent of uh, in a constituency about a lack of vote missing i, I actually feel that you know i take it with a pinch of salt when um, uh, annamalai as well as vinod selvam complained about it of course there have been uh, there would have been issues in that uh, but what were uh, the party doing or what were their booth management if more than a lakh was a huge number right you know it's about a 5 percentage vote uh, missing nearly a 5 to 10 percentage vote missing in depending on the constituency size and uh, you know that is a significant number and then if uh, one is figuring it out only on the election day then there is something uh, wrong with the booth management so i'll rest that there let the election commission come and respond with respect to that and uh, you know if uh, bjp makes a formal complaint then you know then uh, there are uh, and especially when the result come out both dmk as well as admk would actually use this as a reason uh, again uh, when they win or lose so coming to the vote share percentage you know it is very very uh, you know uh, it's not a it's not a right thing you know a lot of people especially you know uh, nearly 30 to uh, 30 plus percentage people didn't even come out to vote is very unfortunate i can understand about definitely about 5 to 8 percentage would be or even maximum 10 percentage would be unable to vote so they may be abroad they may be some other part of the country they would not be able to come back to vote and etc uh, but that is understandable but nearly uh, ad- additional 20 percentage people not voting is something significant so which means the politicians political class is not able to attract Uh, the voters to come to the polling booth i think that is one reason i would say the second is it has become a long weekend friday saturday sunday okay let's go to kodaikanal uti and then you know have fun with the family hell with the nation i think that attitude has to change so that is uh, that is a gyan that i want to see so let's now go into the numbers for your g sir one, one second thing, before sir. we go into sir before we go into that one second sorry to disturb you yeah um viewers um I'm going to try and get this information out uh, today. I'll tweet it out, and I'll also put it back in this video under at the top of the comments. Turns out there is an app that you can use to know where your booth is, also the queue on the booth. So you actually yes. know before you go in how far or how much wait time you have. So make sure that these apps are on your uh, phone. Download them, use them, so that you don't get disappointed when you go there. Supposing your name is not there, but you expect that it is there, like the way Sri Ram just said. So finish the story for us first before we go into the numbers. So did you go to that other random booth and cast your vote in 2019? Yes, I did. I, I did go to the random booth. Uh, went and uh, you know cast my vote my i took my wife to that uh, random booth and then ca- cast uh, her vote my father couldn't vote he was very very disappointed you know what after that what i did is i cre- recreate reapplied for my father for an electoral card right uh, vote voter id and because his vote didn't exist anywhere i had to give a declaration saying that he has not voted in the past before can you imagine Wow. 20 plus years old, right? <laughs> so I, I I went to, I went to election commission and then told them, boss, uh, you know, look, my father had been voting for last 50 years, and uh, you know, his uh, all of us and I gave the past voter ID and then said, can you reinstate? They said there's no way that we can do, and then they suggested give an affidavit saying that you know he has not been voting anywhere before, and then apply for a fresh one. I did that, and he got it. very very unfortunate uh, you know these are some of the things election commission has to mend its ways uh, to uh, you know reinstate and then I, uh, i actually i changed the address where i am today uh, and 2021 free rg every month i check whenever there was a list release just before the election 3 or 4 months the enumeration list gets released every month i check to see whether my name is uh, dropped or not this election again i did that 
you are right there is an app there is a website where you can go and check it you check your booth you can get your booth slip from there and even to the extent election commission had come out with a saying that you know even you give your booth details they'll say how many people are standing in the queue i just tested that yesterday when i went to vote uh, you know in my booth you know they, they said 17 people in the queue and when and i went there i was astonished there were over 25 people between the by the time i just uh, saw that and then went naturally another seven eight people would have joined or you know 10 15 people would have joined 10 15 people would have uh, voted so approximately about 20 25 people were there so i was astonished how they are maintaining the data right the queue uh, length of the queue and all how how they are maintaining that i was very really, very really astonished but please do voters in the other uh, you know constituencies who are watching this show please do ensure that your name is there please take the boot slip please check your uh, you know queue length and then please do go to what i know it's a very uh, uh, summer uh, you know scorching sun but you know please do go out to vote i think this is something that you know it is not just our duty it is our right to sir one one small request to all our viewers i'm doing it fairly early on viewers all of you who are voting uh, i want you to put in by way of comment just the the word yes or no y e s or no yes if you found a vv pat when you put your vote did you find a vv pat i just want you to put yes and if you did not find a vv pat evm but just a plain evm then put no because i have been told that many uh, booths do not have vv pat connected and and i want to make sure that if there is a discrepancy that the um, pmo comes to know that uh, there was uh, no uh, there were some evms without vv pat 100% should be with vv pat seeing a lot of yeses um, that is a good sign. Again, many of you could be in the city. Um, that is also another thing. I would like to know from rural people if you are getting any no's. And 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 this is this makes this is making me very very glad. I've got fifty or sixty. Uh, Sridharji, is Sridharji, you can see the yeah. thing scrolling. Uh, yeah. I mean, Sachin is not able to keep up. <laughs> so <laughs> that's very good to know. Thank you so much because at least. If you made it to the booth, if you got a chance to vote, and if you made sure that whatever symbol you voted, you verified, then at least you can feel that I have done my duty as a citizen. Thank you all for responding so quickly. Sir, let us proceed. I won't interrupt you like this. This is some important thing because this is the first yeah, round. Very and, fair, very fair, very fair. And, and also and I have... Yeah, go ahead, sir. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, in yeah. fact, I did check when I voted. I did check that you know VV Pat machine came. Over. See, it is not that ev no, every booth doesn't have a VV Pat. Every booth has a VV Pat that gets recorded. But only thing is, at random, they pick up five booths uh, in uh, in assembly constituency for cross verification. But every booth will have a VV Pat hundred percentage. That is not uh, an issue, uh, Sri Ayurji and the viewers. So you will be able to cross verify. Seven seconds it displays, uh, you know, what is a, a symbol that you voted for. And if there are discrepancies, immediately you can stop the election. Any individual, if there are discrepancies, you can stop the election and then, you know, tell them. And, uh, you know, electoral officer uh, in charge would do the testing again, keeping all the booth agents together, test for every, every vote. And then only they will re resume the election. And this has happened. Yesterday also there was a lot of complaints. And then immediately people did check for that. And then, you know, re elections resumed. So coming to the vote percentage. Uh, this is for uh, my editor. <laughs> okay. <laughs> See, wh what happened is, you know, uh, there are, uh, there is about 69.46 percentage. It's a drop of a, 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 a approximately about 2 to 3 percentage drop from 2019 election there could be several reasons why this drop happened so generally in a cephalogical calculation trg that if there is a, a one to two percentage change uh, in any vote share percentage then which means uh, you know people are not willing to change the regime so it's a good news and a bad news in Tamil Nadu, when you look at it, it's a good news that, you know, sent, uh, it's a, since it is a Lok Sabha election, 
people do feel that uh, you know modi should come back to power and then hence they are just voting in the pattern that they voted before the bad news is uh, you know they are also voting in favor of dmk alliance i think that is how in general when you look at it i'm not going to because we need lot more data to say that you know uh, uh, you know counter this argument in general that is what the feeling is second uh, indicator if there is a delta of 5 percentage or more increase i'm not saying decrease increase 5 percentage or more increase then it is a, in that particular constituency it's a wave election which is for a change i think that is how generally people do work it because when they want to change people do come out in numbers and then vote whereas when the vote percentage goes down then you know uh, the enthusiastic people who want who want to teach a lesson do not come out on the road that's a in general but let me tell you the difference that i saw yesterday i went to several booths in uh, uh, you know uh, sri perumbudur where i belong to and then you know central chennai I, uh, and some of the booths in uh, south chennai because i have a press card i can walk into any of the electoral booths to uh, collect data so uh, i just went in there was one single comment that i uh, heard from multiple booths especially from the dmk uh, and admk spe specifically from the dmk combined uh, you know booth agents who were sitting outside uh, was the apartment in tamil i'll say a apartment makkalna vote poda vantaanga which means the people from the apartments have come to vote i think that is an indicator that you know even though the vote share has dip, uh, decreased there is a uh, you know the demography of the voter probably is changing because generally the lower economic strata is what the vote bank of dmk and if they come in big number it is in their favor whereas people who have not been traditionally voting who are that you know the so called upper middle class and then upper strata of the economic strata people who think that you know voting is not my, is someone else's job and then you know i can't go on um, i can't go and wait uh, in the queue uh, you know is some something that uh, you know uh, one second sir uh, there was some message that was coming in and then i need to uh, you know um, yeah you go ahead and take care of that sir i'll explain what vv pat means viewers what vv pat is voter verifiable printer attached terminal that is an evm that has a small window in which whatever symbol you cast your vote it will the, the slip will fall through and will stay on the window for 7 second before it falls into the bin that is what is your verification that yes i pressed for bjp and i saw the thing and i saw the my vote being recorded on that sir back to you okay thank you i have got some whatsapp message was closing i just closed my whatsapp thank you uh, it is paper audit trail sir we voter oh, verifiable or verified paper audit trail because it is an audit trail it's a very yeah. thin paper very thin paper okay so um, so i saw that in chennai especially that the voter behavior probably changed people who have not been traditionally voting have come out to vote people who have traditionally been voting probably didn't come out to vote the second big difference i saw in chennai uh, was that um, except south chennai admk was conspicuously missing in action but normally outside the booth you know 200 meters away from the booth they put up a table and then they sit one thing is understandable that no previously they used to issue the booth slips people come there verify and then take a booth slips and then go for voting uh, but that is now done by the government themselves and by the apps also app also it has been done uh, but so uh, th there's no need but every other party was sitting nam tamilar was there and then dmd even dmdk was not uh, present much in central chennai so admk uh, you know this is a report from coimbatore also i spoke to several friends in coimbatore uh, these are the two constituencies uh, two areas that i was just concentrating to collect some information and conspicuously missing in action on the election day so booth management which means they have resigned to the uh, fact that either they are going to definitely they are going to lose in all the seats or they are even uh, willing to go to the third position and that's my 
reading when I was touring uh, the state uh, in the last uh, 10, 15 days before the election, where I was going to several places, what I saw was ADMK was not in action. Okay. Generally, uh, you know, ADMK has a very strong cadre base, minimum 22 to 25 percentage cadre base who are committed voters and they were missing in action. I think that's a message that I saw through that. So coming back to the voting percentage, um, generally when there is a 70 plus percentage vote and there is, as I told you, when there is a delta is about 5 percentage change, then, uh, you know, uh, there is a voting for a change. But let's take some of the very prominent, uh, you know, areas or prominent constituencies. Um, South Chennai, there is a dip in 5 percentage, which means uh, the incumbent uh, MP is in more, more favor than anybody else because there is a dip in the percentage. And uh, Kwaimthur, there is a dip in the percentage by about 2 to 3 percentage. If I'm not wrong, the uh, declared, uh, declared by... Um, uh, you know, uh, election commission is 64.81 and then last time it was about 66 percentage. Though most of the WhatsApp uh, circulations, you will see 63 percentage. It was originally about 66 percentage as a vote share in Coimbatore. Now it has come, come down by about a 1 percentage. So, but the behavior, if it has changed, for example, people from the in, uh, what I saw in Coimbatore is a lot of industrialists came to vote. Generally, they don't come to vote. A lot of industrialists came to vote. <coughs> and likewise, a lot of people who are uh, the so-called, uh, you know, elite crowd who don't come to vote, they were in uh, standing in the, uh, you know, uh, polling booth and then voting. I think that shows that if there is a change in the mindset. Um, unfortunately, Coimbatore South and North, we should have seen about 75 to 80 percentage vote uh, voter turnout to uh, fill the lag that is uh, ADMK, DMK stronghold of Sulur, um, you know, uh, Palladam and Singanalur. I think these three areas are not a stronghold of BJP and it is traditionally a ADMK stronghold and a DMK stronghold too. And if there is a voter turnout and whereas in, uh, the voter turnout in uh, Sulur has been the highest, if I'm not wrong, about 75 percentage. Overall, about 64 percentage, but uh, water turnout in Sulur is about uh, 75 percentage. Coimbatore South and North is somewhere in sub 60 percentage. I think that's not a very great news uh, if one has to see, uh, you know, how the uh, if, well, not a great news for anomaly. But we need to wait and see till June 4th. I'm, all I'm statements I'm making viewers are based on a rough calculations based on the voter turnout that has happened but uh, you know we need an exit poll data we need more of data from the ground as to what the voter behavior had been before coming to a conclusion but this is the reality and uh, the voter turnout that is across india that has happened about another 102 uh, you know uh, constituencies went for vote uh, in um, uh, you know uh, in the country on uh, 19th and the voter turnout average voter turnout has been about 60 percentage approximately around 60 percentage but Tamil Nadu is above average they have come to about 69 percentage voter turnout but 60 percentage some of those constituencies that we look at uh, is an they are actually maintaining the trend for example Uttar Pradesh there were about nine odd seats went to poll uh, yesterday and, uh, you know, it was somewhere around 54 to 59 percentage voter turnout. I think that's approximately the... Sri Ramji, uh, Sri Ramji yeah. the graphic is right there for the national polls. If yeah. you can see that. Yeah, yeah okay. I'm able to see that. UP is eight seats, sir. Yeah. Uh, UP is eight seats and then, uh, you know, 57 percentage. So, we're starting from 55 to 59 percentage average. When you take this 57 percentage, there's more or less... Uh, uh, more or less in the expected range, which means people are not changing a lot. Uh, Bihar has been a dip in the vote share. You know, they were traditionally not a very big state, which gives you 65, 70 percentage vote share. But there's a significant dip in the four seats, which also shows that they are, there is no big change that is happening. Unfortunately, those four are uh, where the Congress and RJD 
or uh, the sitting uh, incumbent MPs. What is interesting is West Bengal, 77.57 vote uh, percentage. There, traditionally, West Bengal is a high voter state. Uh, for example, uh, 85, 83, 85 percentage, there is a significant dip in the voting percentage, which also shows to an extent that it is not a wave, it is a waveless election. So if it is a wave election, then it is generally for a wave for a change. 2014 that we saw, it was a wave for a change. 2019 was more or less, you know, not a, not a non-wave election where it just remained, the incumbent uh, parties remained in the power. So 2024 also, what we see is a waveless election, which means there is no motivation for people to change. I think that is what the message that I look at it from all the vote percentage that I see, uh, Sri Ayarji, on the you know table that you are projecting. Thank you, sir. Um, lastly, this is the 102 seats that went to polls. Um, and... Uh, I saw one channel, good friend of mine, Sanjay Dikshit's Jaipur Dialogues, predicting a plus 15 for BJP. So yeah. from this number is 40. Uh, the projection was out of this uh, plus 15 for BJP. Everybody was a little concerned about the numbers. But sir, this is, I don't think this is final. You know why? Look at Tamil Nadu, sir. In this, it says 62%. We know yeah. the final number was 69%. So there must yeah. have been an upward revision after this. So no need yep. to feel lose, ho lose heart, guys. Again, we have to start looking at ECI sites. And as soon as we get something, we will update you. There are going to be more, uh, you know, um, sessions on this. Uh, this Today evening, we have two more. So there's going to be a lot of discussion about all these things. So just stay tuned. Just keep coming back to P-Gurus. We, we want to give you the truth. Sir, can one you, can other you interesting the, Can you show the map again? Uh, you know, I just yeah. want to make a comment, right? So, in this, the 102 seats that went to poll on 19th uh, uh, you know, April, uh, the interesting fact is these are all Indy Alliance dominated seats, if you look at it. Uh, last time it was about uh, DMK. DMK plus was 38 seats, right? You know, in uh, Tamil Nadu. Uh, because there was the ADMK, there was only one, and then 38 seats was DMK plus, and uh, you know, and all other states put together, it was an Indy Alliance dominated seat. So once again, for people who are in favor of Modi to come to uh, you know, uh, you know, power, look at that number that uh, you know, 40 plus seats. Actually, 42 for NDA. There are some two in others that will add up. Add up. So, 42 for NDA in that uh, uh, entire numbers that we are seeing, 102. And then about 45 for 45 or 46 for uh, Indy Alliance, a current Indy Alliance composition. Remaining were others, uh, you know, in that uh, numbers when you look at it. Actually, if you uh, have a look at this, uh, you know, there is a significant amount of change that is going to happen NDA would be in the range of about 60 to 65. Not just BJP alone will be uh, uh, slightly about 10 to 15 that will go. But the NDA on its own will be about in this 102, 60 to 65 seats is what we expect that, you know, NDA will win out of this one or two uh, seats that went to poll. I just wanted to make this point uh, before we move from further. Thank you so much, sir. And um, we have a few questions that we can take. Viewers, we are going to be coming back. And we'll be talking about more or less the same topic in Tamil, except that there's going to be a lot more regional coverage in that. Yeah. And I just wanted to let all of us know that I, we would really, really be happy if you could come back for Tamil because there will be some other data that is going to be discussed. Uh, specific instances, how things happen, what happened in different places, and so on and so forth. So please do come back for that. Um, sir, one, one question. Um, you said... I was going to ask you this and you said this thing that ADMK was missing. When when one party goes missing like that, uh, that gives rise to a lot of speculation. Was they Were they bought off or were they persuaded? Whatever it is. Sir, usually the blame that is laid at the door of the Dravida parties is that 3.30 p.m. onwards, they just turn off CCTV, pay off the booth agents, drive them out sometimes. And they harvest the uncast boots. In other yeah. words, the apartment boats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Looks like 
looks like this time voting went on till 7 p.m. So talk to us a little bit about these things, whether this pilferage was actually addressed. Even that would be a big plus, sir. Sure, definitely. See, ADM, I will divide the ADMK voters all along into two. Number one, uh, uh, generation after generation voting for two leaf symbol, irrespective of who the candidate, who the leader is. Just the, They just blindly vote for two leaves. That is one set of people. There's other set of people who had been anti-DMK voters for lack of choice available had been voting ADMK. For example, when Jayalalitha was there, you know, they have been voting uh, Jayalalitha significantly, especially the state elections, more so in the national elections too. They were voting in favor of Jayalalitha or uh, ADMK because Jayalalitha was a leader and then she was a nationalist and everybody and lack of credible opposition available. Uh, say BJP or anybody else. So that itself is a significant number uh, who had been voting in favor of ADMK. So that if, when you look at that, in th this time, ADMK, the candidate choices were pathetic. I would say, I will use this word pathetic because uh, except uh, two people, nobody is known. One is uh, South Chennai, uh, Jayavadana and then Singai Ramachandran of Kwaimutu, that Singai Ramachandran also because he was IT being lead, he is, no, he is known and because he was competing against Anamali, he, he came to a bit of a fame. Otherwise, he was not known as a big politician, uh, you know, in, uh, you know, from ADMK. Rest of the uh, ADMK cont uh, contenders were not even known. To that extent, that a lot of uh, the general, sec the state district secretaries complained about that, you know, the choice of, uh, you know, candidate. I think that is one big, big way blunder Edda Party did in this election. And naturally, when uh, the party machineries, especially the, uh, the office bearers, are not interested in showing or spending their effort and time and money in the election work, naturally, the carders also will lose interest. So, I look at that vote share ch uh, shift. When we were in alliance with the ADMK, the vote transfer never used to happen. Whereas when we are not in the alliance, the vote transfer of traditional ADMK voters significantly shifting towards BJP. This is what I see, uh, you know, in Chennai and Coimbatore, uh, my friends were touring and then they communicated. And then in Chennai also, I saw this, a significant portion of uh, the ADMK traditional voters are changing uh, or uh, uh, transferring their votes to BJP. The second thing that I looked at, you know, like you are saying, 3.30, they'll just start capturing the booth, right? And this time it did not happen for various reasons because BJP was very vigilant. BJP did not want to allow that to happen. Uh, whereas ADMK, DMK are Pangalis. I have always been saying in your show, sir, that they are Pangalis. They'll work towards no, not sir, sir, allowing... Sir. Sir, please let us name Pangalis as partners in crime. Yeah. Yeah, Pangalis in English is partners in crime. Maybe that's a right app word. They are partners in crime. They don't want any third force to emerge. Be it uh, Vijayagant or be it anybody, they don't want the third force to image, emerge. So they don't want BJP to emerge also. In fact, you know, I told in, uh, you know, uh, Kwaimutur when Annamalai's uh, election, when we even talked here, the biggest challenge that he was going to face was DMK, ADMK in a tacit understanding to do the vote transfer amongst themselves to beat uh, Annamalai. But I think he managed it really well on the campaign trail that I was able to see. He managed it uh, really, really well in each one of the places. So uh, to answer your question, the booth capturing did not happen or at least there was no major complaint with respect to the booth capturing unlike you know uh, west bengal uh, there were there were issue the, the the crpf had to drive out people who came to capture the booth but here in in tamil nadu i think to the major extent we never even uh, heard any complaint from any party that the booth is being captured except maybe one or two there were some uh, irregularities that we saw but other than that it was more, more or less a very, uh, you know, cool election. So that's where I see the ADMK conspicuously missing. Probably they knew that their vote base is shifting. And it should. In my opinion, I think Edapadi needs to learn a lesson, um, especially for the kind of video that he put up on Modi. 
uh, I think, you know, people will start teaching him a lesson. And post-election, he will actually regret and repent for uh, posting such a video on social media, very derogatory about the Prime Minister with whom, uh, who actually saved his government in 2019 timeframes. I think, you know, it is a betrayal by Edapadi and uh, ADMK. I think that uh, lesson would be taught by the people. I hope so. Thank you, Sriramji. Now, uh, let's get back to Coimbatore because that is an important point because all the hard work that uh, Annamalai put in his Padayatra and meeting the press, taking brutal questions. There were days when he would give a press conference before boarding a flight in, let's say, Madurai or Coimbatore. He lands in Chennai, another press conference in 20 minutes, 30 minutes later. And, and all that stuff, it all comes down to this one constituency. Is Annamalai yeah. going to win Coimbatore or not? So, sir, what is your information from the ground on the amount of money that was distributed? One. Second, did ADMK also distribute? I know DMK did. Go ahead, sir. So, one thing is going to, uh, I'm going to make a statement, very bold statement here. All parties in connivance distributed money. They actually scheduled their timing so that, you know, the other will not, others will not complain to uh, election commission about the others. I think this, they, everybody was a partner in crime. Uh, generally, you know, what happens is, you uh, know, it is a curse that Tamil Nadu, the uh, money distribution is mandatory ritual as part of the uh, election. And, uh, you know, now the Tamil Nadu voters have come to a bit of an understanding that, you know, 200 to 300 rupees per vote for MP election is a uh, rate that they had fixed. And anybody who gives more gets a little more favor, but otherwise 200 to 300 per vote is a fixed rate. And for assembly, it is about 500 to 600 and for, uh, uh, you know, a councillor election or local body about 1000 rupees. Because they are very judicial, you know, if I'm, I'm really sarcastic about it. And then, you know, uh, talking with pain Sri uh, you know, most of the places people say that, oh, yeah, MP election, they need to distribute to few lakh people. So we don't want, we, we don't expect, we are not greedy to get about 1000 plus rupees uh, and all. Whereas in a, uh, in a, in a local body election that, uh, you know, the candidate has to distribute only for few thousand people. So he can afford to, he or she can afford to give a uh, thousand rupees per vote. I think that, that, you know, Tamil Nadu people, voters, many of the voters have come to that uh, terms that, you know, they even fix the rate. And the second thing is, you know, when I, when you go and ask them, come on, you know, your ADMK pays you, DMK pays you, so BJP also may be paying you. And, uh, you know, who do you vote uh, when, when this happens? They say that, you know, uh, okay, we have six votes in our uh, in our household. We vote two each. So, we are very, very judicial in our approach, right? Sir, the, uh, the politicians have, uh, you know, brought the election to this level. But only glad thing is, it is about 20 to 30 percentage voters who get this money, not the entire 100 percentage. Just the lower strata uh, in the economic strata of the people who expect this money to be given, but otherwise not everybody else. In fact, to the same, some of the apartment people, so-called apartment people complain that nobody paid me anything and uh, I have not seen them paying. But, you know, uh, the apartment uh, voters are not their, uh, not their uh, audience of attention. I will put it that way. But yes, money distribution happened. Even to some extent, there are innovative ways of money distribution too happened is what I heard through uh, digital India, the digital payments also happened, right? One can one can assume that, you know, how uh, digital payment can be done in these things. I think, you know, our politicians know the, the you know, how to, uh, how to circumvent this. In fact, uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm not going to name a party. I'm not going to name the individual who shared this information. Uh, you know, somewhere down south, uh, you know, someone was uh, asking, how do you transport this, this amount of money? And, uh, you know, they have invented a way. They'll actually take a couple of lakhs of rupees, uh, you know, in a car and then the, your patrol will stop them. The moment the patrol stops them, you know, this guy communicates back who is carrying about four or five crores in a couple of vehicles. And this guy, you know, uh, argues with the uh, pa patrol people saying that, you know, oh, this is my money, that and all these. And then he sees he or she, he sees that, you know, the real uh, 
uh, wagon where a vehicle that is carrying the money has passed this uh, check post then he reveals uh, in a atm withdrawal slip or some other documentation stating that you know why he is carrying this much of money so that you know no, uh, you know they let him go and the second thing is was come service couple of lakhs uh, as against few crores it's always a collateral damage one can suffer and couple of lakhs after election one can go and give an account and then collect the money back right it's a question of keeping that in a safe custody for about 45 days and uh, that money is going to come back anyway and uh, there are very innovative ways that you know people are actually using this to transport money and the third thing that i knew is that you know nowadays uh, you know people know that elections are going to be announced so they take the money to the pockets wherever it has to be distributed well ahead of the election about 3 or 4 uh, uh, you know uh, uh, what do you call uh, months ahead of the election they keep the money take the money and then keep it there uh, once again you know one of my good friend in one of the party said that you know in tamil nadu from north chennai to kanyakumari uh, you know there are crorepatis who are available with whom the money can be lodged and then withdrawn at any point given point in time okay so it has become an industry on its own and the one uh, same person may be a custodian of money for all the parties also right more than one party so that is equal the level opportunity that, custodian sir equal, equal opportunity, opportunity equal custodian opportunity custodian and it has become an industry on its own right actually i'm smiling and then talking about this sir but i am in very very pain to say this right as an analyst when i look at that and as a nationalist when i look at that it's highly painful that people are willing to stoop to the level of selling their votes okay some arguments people say i we take money from everybody and then vote to our conscience As even that i cannot accept it right uh, but you know that's a reality i i want to make a comment on this sorry sir just one second ravi if you actually got those notes get them checked in a bank there's no way a newspaper can give notes <laughs> guys as well as the one currency point. yeah one more point it is not the hindu that is uh, distributing it is the paper distributor in that region who has been used i think that is how i will uh, say that it is not just the paper or the publisher who is uh, doing that uh, that's my comment on that um all right so sir let's get get back to our narrative so yeah. money was not much of a factor you think yeah. other than yeah. the usual stuff right yeah i think money this time uh, fortunately money was not a major factor unlike uh, previous elections strategy that money was not a major factor in fact I, i was astonished to see that dmk did not distribute money in many constituencies i could even name uh, in chennai also there were the, there were area the you know dmk did not distribute money in uh, one of the constituency uh, but even across uh, tamil nadu i think uh, you know more than 20 25 constituencies or at least more than 15 constituencies dmk did not distribute money that i know for sure uh, uh, other places uh, you know did they distribute yes do i have a proof no because these are all well, you know when you when you go across you know that you know who is distributing who is not distributing uh, so naturally if someone asks me give me a proof and then since i am making an allegation come and uh, give a proof i don't have a proof otherwise i would have taken a video recording and then uh, you know shown but in social media you could see some video recordings that are being uh, published yes there is one documented video of a dmk local level guy actually being caught by the police and being thrashed for trying right. to distribute cash at the booth uh, polling booth this video is available on social media those of you who are still not following twitter please do so twitter has the hottest happening stuff as far as politics is concerned True. without a yeah. doubt so yeah. and, and while you are at it also follow both sriram sejadri and me <laughs> we are of course soliciting your support but you know news will come to you rather than you go seeking for it that is sure. the advantage sure. sir uh, let's take a couple of questions if you don't mind and then we can take sure. a 10 minute break and then we'll recharge our batteries and come back again come so on. sir one takeaway i think is perhaps dmk and admk are keeping their powder dry which is another american expression for a next battle which is the state assembly elections that's right my, my take sir you you very true to... very true very true because 
uh, DMK knows very well that Indi Alliance is not going to form the uh, part, uh, government. They know very well Modi is going to come back to third term. That's why the money power was not, they are not spending money. Same with, uh, you know, uh, what do you call ADMK? They are also not spending money significantly because they want to conserve for 2026. Sir, in, in Tamil, in Chennai Tamil, it is put a case. Put a case. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, guys, that's our humor for the day. Let's take a quick look at some questions. Sham Tarun, thank you so much for uh, your super sticker. Vasudevan, thank you for becoming a YouTube member. Rohit Akshay wants to know, Jay Ram, do you see low voter turnout in Chennai affecting BJP or the ruling DMK? Rohit, generally a lower voter turnout is, uh, you know, favoring the incumbent. But in this case, who is the incumbent? Uh, is it uh, DMK government at the state or uh, Modi government at the center? I think that's where the dilemma when it comes to. And also we need to look at what is the composition of this uh, voter turnout. I think that data we don't have. Probably election commission will release that in a day or two as to youth, women, uh, male and all those demographies of uh, you know, the voter turnout. Once we have that, maybe next week we can take up a uh, look at that and then little more analysis of that to see, uh, you know, how this has happened. Uh, because we will actually know by Form 20 uh, when it is getting updated, you know, which areas of people have voted. So when these data come out, you know, we will be able to make a little more meaningful, uh, you know, uh, analysis of that. Thank you, sir. Uh, full Metal Heart, thank you so much. South NDA seats will definitely add TDP alliance. I think he's just asking. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. In South, I think, you know, there will be much more NDA. In fact, even in Tamil Nadu, I still keep my fingers crossed as to 5 to 7. We talked about it. I still keep my fingers crossed and then it is going to happen. Minimum 4 is going to happen for sure. Uh, in Tamil Nadu for NDA, 4 to 5, including Pondicherry, 5 would happen. Uh, I think that I am very, very certain about. So it is a good ma good start for uh, from Tamil Nadu and from the South. You know, um, I, I am intrigued about this one candidate, Vasantha Rajan from BJP Polachi. Yeah. One interview, five minutes. Yeah. It melted hearts. It melted people's hearts. Yeah. In fact, in fact, that way, we, if uh, that interview, if see people have seen, he is not a very charismatic, known, uh, you know, ca candidate from BJP. Of course, he is a district secretary of Polachi too. But uh, you know, the way that he was expressing, I think you know, he has done his homework. I think Polachi should uh, vote him. But uh, now that the election is over, we need to wait and see. But definitely, definitely, uh, uh, you know, candidate who opened my eyes too. Next one, please. Uh, oh, by the way, it was on Adan. Adan Tamil is the channel name. Those of you who follow Tamil, do look at that because even the host started tearing up. Right. That's right. Ne next one from Shankar VK. Why can't ECI run videos on how to vote and exhorting people to vote? I think they do. I think they do. They do. Uh, actually, uh, Election Commission does a lot of, uh, you know, uh, groundwork and then a lot of propaganda to say how to vote as well as, you know, luring people to vote. Uh, but, you know, it is end of the day individuals, uh, Shankar, and politicians are not attracting. I think I would blame it on both the communities, you know, both the individuals as well as the <laughs> politicians who are not attracting people to vote. Next one, please. Full Metal Heart, thank you so much. So, uh, sir, how will Congress groundwork all over India? People are saying BJP workers are lazy. What about Congress workers? Uh, as a full metal heart, I don't agree that BJP workers are lazy because some most of the BJP workers come from RSS background, not the Karyakartas. I think, you know, when you look at the Hindi heartland and all, you know, the selfless workers, they don't even wait for BJP to feed them. They just uh, feed on their own and then start working. I think, you know, that uh, definitely, you know, I don't take it. In Congress, I don't know whether do they have the workers. Beyond Vindhyas, I don't see they have any big, uh, you know, um, Telangana and Karnataka, because they won, uh, probably, you know, they may have some strong worker base or uh, booth agents uh, working. But other than that, I think, you know, they are they still to sulk a lot because they know that, you know, the writing is on the wall. They don't have a, a proper leader to be sold, even to themselves, forget about to the nation. 
next one, please. And this is the last question. Uh, please don't add any more questions. We need a break to just recharge and then come back for Tamil. Magnet Ranga, can NDA claim moral victory in Tamil Nadu with just seven to eight seats? Okay, BJP doesn't have any base as of now in Tamil Nadu. Magnet Ranga, excellent question. I would say even two seat, one or two seats itself, you know, they can claim a moral victory. Percentage of vote when it crosses about 15 percentage, so they can uh, uh, claim a moral victory. I will make a bold statement here. BJP on its own will cross 20 percentage vote mark with an NDA about 25 to 27 percentage vote mark. And ADMK on its own will be sub 20 percentage. I am making a very bold statement. I am putting my neck out there. I may be wrong, give or take one or two percentage, but uh, BJP on its own will be either equal or more than ADMK. I think that's a significant moral victory. I think that is what I will look at it as a, uh, you know, uh, victory in my opinion. Leave alone the seats and uh, other uh, details. Thank you so much, Sriramji. Wonderful, wonderful discussion, sir. I think we have probably had the best. See, I've been watching a lot of these shows now. I can tell you, Sriramji brings his X factor, uh, something more than what you can expect from other people. Sir, you don't know. If BJP puts up a strong performance, you as an individual perhaps should, uh, I mean, you should consider that you have contributed to that in a big way because it's not, not just coming on P Gurus for the last six months or a year. Not because you've been doing this for many years now. In fact, he has a lot of good monikers about him. So good luck, sir. And viewers, we'll be back in eight minutes on Tamil Channel. Do come back and support us there because we have additional information to share with you. Thanks once again, sir. Namaskar. Namaskar.